Good morning and happy Friday, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for October 4th, 2019. So it's Friday, and boy, we have the whole world watching today. Everyone is kind of focusing in on this employment situation number that comes out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time this morning. That employment situation number is gonna be critical on how we move through today. Um, as, right, as of right now, that's about, um, as I'm recording this, um, it's only about uh, 40 minutes away from the release of that information. And as you can see, um, as we speak right now, uh, futures are looking slightly lower. Dow futures are down 66 points. We've been down as much as 80 points, a little bit more this morning in anticipation of that number. And obviously there's a lot uh, weighing on this number this morning. Let's take a look at the um, moving averages here. Yesterday we had a beautiful bounce um, in the market. Uh, there was a disappointment in the ISM services number. I mentioned that yesterday. We needed to watch that closely. We click, quickly plunged more than 300 points here in the Dow, testing that 200 day moving average as I suggested that. Um, it seemed unlikely to me that we weren't at least going to uh, get down there to test those. And we certainly did that yesterday. Now it's going to be incredibly important, leaving behind a hammer pattern like this, it's gonna be incredibly important that we get some kind of a follow through. A hammer is not a bullish pattern if there is no follow through to that pattern. It can be, uh, it'll, it'll turn out to be more ambiguous as to what that might mean. So we need to see uh, that jobs number produce a good result this morning and maybe mush, move us higher to end this week with that little bit of a rally that could relieve some of the pressure here in the current market. Now keep in mind, we still have a 50 day moving average. Notice this 50 day moving average is dropping and our um, shorter moving averages are moving down to cross through. So we're creating a fairly significant resistance level in the chart right in here. So even if we do rally, we wanna be very uh, focused on that resistance area up in here as we start to rally back up that may be the place where we actually see follow through selling and we'll have to watch that closely so keep an eye on that um, we have tremendous technical damage in these charts with um, double top high uh, pattern showing here in the diamonds. Not a good situation for the market. And as we head into Friday, consider how much risk you want to carry into the weekend, just simply because we, we have so much uncertainty um, circulating around. We're going to have to really pay close attention uh, to this market and uh, the key metrics that continue to roll out as we head toward earnings. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY did a little bit better job yesterday, didn't quite make it to its 200 day moving average. In a way that's a, that's a positive sign, in another way it's a little bit of a disappointing sign because if we don't test that level, the pro, the, the uh, it raises the probability that we could still test it. And so this nice um, hammer type pattern, very bullish price action responding back strongly yesterday, um, you know, on hopes and really what what brought us back is the hope that um, with these poor economic numbers, now the FOMC will be forced to lower rates again. Uh, that's really what created this bounce back response. Plus, we were just a little bit oversold in the short term. But that bounce back up, once again, will not be um, significant if we cannot follow through today. So that employment situation will be critical. Also, kind of keep in mind that we have developed ourselves a significant level of resistance right in here. And notice also, once again, that that 50-day moving average of the SPY is starting to roll down. That is an uncomfortable situation that we don't want to see. And we, we've got to work ourselves back up through this massive technical damage here in the chart. 
part. It's just uh, there should be a, a reason for a little bit of concern here um, overall. So watch that closely once we come back up. If we come back up and hit that resistance area in here, that's where we would expect to see the bears lined up to defend that resistance. Let's take a look at the cues. Q's also bouncing strongly yesterday, bouncing um, uh, before we hit that 200 day moving average. So we still have that technical damage here in the chart. As you can see, that 50 day moving average is now starting to decline our shorter term averages pushing through. And we still have these lower highs that we continue to make here in the queues, setting up a line of downtrend that is going to be difficult to probably breach. So even though we may rally back up we'll have to watch that closely it's likely going to take some really good news to move us up through those levels so be really careful about overextending long or expecting that this relief rally is just going to take off and zoom us right back to the to the highs because that just really seems unlikely to me with these technical uh, damages in here that we have. Also remember that because we haven't tested that 200 day moving average, if we were to happen to get a disappointing re employment report, don't be all that surprised to see us moving down in the next few days, uh, trading days to test that 200 day moving average. Let's hope that doesn't occur and we get some good results out of that jobs number. Let's take a look at IWM. This one really gives me um, reason for concern. If we take a look at what we've got going on here in IWM, we have had a downtrend going on for a long time in IWM. We briefly popped through, but we're unable to hold that downtrend as support sinking right back down. Now, if I zoom this up and look at this really closely, I want you to notice that we just about have the 50 day moving average ready to cross down through the 200. Now, most of you know that that um, a lot of folks call that the death cross. That that can be very very damaging for a chart, any chart, and even an index. So with that 50 preparing to cross down through that 200 and us building a, a substantial level of price resistance right in here, it's going to make it be really critical to see what happens here with the IWM. If it can actually get back up there or if we slam into that area, turn right back around and uh, start to continue to fail. If we take a look here on the bullish side of things, we did a really good job of holding on to this key support. Support. We briefly dropped through that yesterday, but rallied back at the end of the day. So it's going to be important if we fail at this support level, if we can't can't hold this. I want you to see how deep a hole we actually have here underneath IWM and the critical uh, state that we might be here on IWM. So this death cross will not be um, uh, a pleasant experience um, if we start seeing uh, those prices fail below this level. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX spiked up again yesterday. Spiking up, um, it was obviously pretty um, uncertain uh, early in the day, spiking back up, but that bounce back rally certainly turned things back around and moved us back down. So technically speaking, I think I'm gonna call this a hold if, if I were to move this down here, and I really probably should to show that little trend that was established here, we still have broken above that little downtrend. Any pullback rest in here that holds a support, that's where a little concern would come in for me if that fear starts creeping up. What we want to see is we want to see that VIX um, starting to relax. Maybe that employment situation gives us, uh, gives the bulls just enough of that um, inspiration to move us back down and uh, break below that trend. Um, we'll have to watch this level. This is a fairly key level of support. We've seen it act in, in, as support multiple times in this chart. If we need to drift, uh, drift that uh, fear back down below here, any hold up in this area can create more shock waves to the upside. So be careful. Um, watch that VIX pretty closely. Let's take a look at T2122. T2122 is a four week new high, new low ratio. I get a lot of folks asking me about T2122. And as far as I know, and T2122 is only 
listed on the TC2000 platform. If you guys are interested in that, you may be able to do some kind of a Google search and find it. I get a lot of questions about this indicator. Um, it's really a very simple indicator. It's just a four week new high, new low ratio. And you can see that is down here in what I call the, the bullish reversal zone. We push down, every time we push down into this zone, we tend to get that market bounce. It's gonna be critical today on that employment situation report that we get good news and bounce us up. We certainly have plenty of upside that we can move to uh, the upside before we hit that bearish reversal zone up here um, in T2122. But just keep in mind, that bounce yesterday actually opened up a potential window to move back down. So keep that in mind. Um, we are not out of the woods here yet, uh, particularly if that number disappoints this morning. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our economic calendar today. And certainly I've been talking about it all along. Our economic calendar has plenty to say about what's going to happen today in the market. At 8.30 a.m. we have two key reports. First, the big one of the day, the employment situation number. Right now, consensus is expecting somewhere around 145,000 jobs being created. The range is somewhere between 120 and 179 in the consensus. If we hold up in those numbers, I think the market will be pretty happy and hold up well. If we happen to get a surprise number that disappoints, um, we come in much lower. Obviously, we would expect the market to react negatively to that. And if we get a very strong number, the market will likely um, react positively to that as long as it's not too strong. If it comes in too strong, the market will, will view that as a possibility that we won't get a rate cut and we could actually have a negative reaction if the number is too strong. So one of those interesting dynamics that we have to pay attention to here on that number coming out an hour before the market opens so watch the market what futures are doing right now really doesn't matter it's going to change dramatically as soon as that number releases international trading goods comes out at the same time that also can be a market moving event but this morning everyone everyone's eyes is on this the world's eyes are watching that employment situation number then keep in mind we have a parade of fed speakers today this is ridiculous how many fed speakers here recently that we've had and Jerome Powell speaks himself at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's obviously something that we all want to pay attention to. It's unlikely that these guys will or, or these folks will um, reveal anything new about rates. Um, but you always want to pay attention when the Fed talks, everyone listens. So you want to pay attention to that as we go throughout the day and all of that Fed speak spinning around out there. Let's take a look. Uh, well, before we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up, let's take a look at our, or I would like you to do me a favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, seen this report, if you could do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube. You know, guys, uh, the purpose of this video is not to provide uh, any kind of prediction as to what the market is. The purpose of this video is to focus everyone on the technicals of the chart and what's really important for the day and give you a sense of how you want to approach the market for for the day um, with with this information so in taking that look hopefully you find some some usefulness here and it helps you focus in on um, those key things that you want to deal with um, as a trader today and how you might want to approach the market if you find this helpful please do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and also leave a brief comment all of those comments make a difference helps the algorithms to show these videos to more folks and makes uh, well well, it just it just helps a ton and I truly truly appreciate everyone who takes the time to do that you guys are awesome thank you very much now let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up we we have to be really really careful today um, with any any of these stocks because the fluctuation that could occur in this market um, could be extreme so let's watch that carefully 
um, and and be really cautious on how we approach today. A lot could change here in about 30 minutes when that number comes out. So let's take a look at Nike. Nike, really nice looking chart. You can see Nike holding up well. Um, if you remember, Nike's already uh, reported their earnings and um, moved up nicely here. And as you can see, Nike holding up very, very well here, moving in its trend. Nice bullish pattern yesterday, showing some signs that it may be willing to move on higher and look pretty good here. So might want to keep an eye on Nike. Apple might be another one to kind of keep an eye on. Apple had a really nice bounce response yesterday in the market. And what's key about this chart, I think, is that we've held up now in this support level. We've kind of broken our trend here a little bit, but that's just part of this wildness of this market, the whipsaws that we've been experiencing here, making it very difficult. For me, you can see I've placed a price alert up here. If that can maybe break on through, I might have some interest in Apple again. We'll want to watch that closely if we can get past some of this wild uh, price swings in the market. Take a look at PepsiCo. PepsiCo had a good day yesterday, popping up on earnings kind of whipping around here as you can see but we might want to keep an eye on pepsico after that good earnings report if this settles back down into here it could give us an opportunity to pick up um, you know one of these consumer defensive sectors uh, stocks when the market is tumultuous like this we can sometimes find some good stocks in that sector so watch that close take a look at home home has been um, i've reported on this in a few times this is this nice little rounded bottom breakout type pattern now we struggled right in here and that's kind of come i mean when we have this market struggle going on that we've had um not too surprising but relatively speaking this has held up quite well holding up in this area we just need a little bullish price action in the market to maybe move this higher and the thing i like about this is this big open gap above if we can pop out of here there is that chance this moves on up to fill that gap so keep that in mind we've got about a month uh you know before earnings reports uh, well, no, we've got more than that. We've got several months here uh, before earnings reports on home. So we've got plenty of upside potential here in uh, that chart. Keep an eye on that one. It's looking pretty good. Um, I still think this Goodyear tire has a chance, even though we've been really bouncing around quite a little bit because of this market volatility that we've seen. Goodyear tire has held up quite well overall. And yesterday, that nice little bounce um, brought this right back up. So we want to keep an eye on this. If this can hold this area in here, and I think it's going to be really important, that little trend, we need to get back up into here and hold. So if we can move on up, Goodyear Tire may have... Um, you know some good opportunity in here if it can hold and you know all of these things that i'm talking about here guys there's a lot of big ifs out there in that market right now and and to be honest for me i want to be more of a seller heading into this weekend than i want to be a bit a big buyer it's it's very very difficult to know with so much uncertainty out there of earnings coming, trade war um, with um, China negotiations getting ready to resume. We have uh, new tariffs going into effect uh, middle of the month here on Europe. It's just all over the place. There's just so much going on besides the distraction of the impeachment drama that's that's going on in Washington. Um, all of those things spinning around just gives so much uncertainty certainty this market so much uncomfortableness it's hard to have the confidence to hold much of anything um, super long into a market like that so be really really careful guys uh, plan your risk very carefully and um, think about all of that uncertainty out there remember a big part of our job is to protect our capital we don't have to trade every day in the market if you're struggling as a trader i want to encourage you to not give up on your trading but maybe back off a little bit when the market is providing us with so much uncertainty protect that capital remember we can always come back when the market and the market will trust me on this this will all eventually pass and we'll eventually get back to a smoother market, whether it be an uptrend or a downtrend. We'll get back into a more um, a disciplined or a more um, readable pattern is what I should say that we can all trade. 
and um, and have better results. And I want to encourage everyone, if you haven't seen this before, go over to the YouTube channel and watch the videos on the 3-8 trap. The 3-8 trap on both the Hike and Ashy and um, uh, charts and standard charts because I, I'm telling you if you go to the intraday charts um, members of right way options are having tremendous success with this strategy and if you watch those videos you may find some great help in being able to pull some money out of the market without taking longer term swing risk right now and it's actually a very very simple plan so check out those videos everyone I want to thank you very much for um, being here this week thank you for watching I truly appreciate it feel please uh, do me a favor and click that thumbs up and leave a comment I want to wish you all the very best this weekend take care we'll talk to you all bright and early Monday morning have a good one everyone